Greetings once again from Muldrow, Oklahoma, where I'm on the road with my dear friend, Ronnie Webb. We're taking care of our work in the business of nutrition. We're helping folks learn how to live healthy and also showing them how to learn to relax because we're pulling a boat behind us and we're on some lake somewhere almost every day fishing. I was talking to a notable songwriter, you would know if I called his name, around 1985. I'll share his name in the entire story in another episode of the story behind the song. But today, I'll say, in the course of our conversation, I asked him to pray for me so that the Father would allow me to write songs. And then he asked me a question that I've never forgotten. He said, Rob, are you willing to go through what one must go through for a song to be burst out of you? Oof, what, an, what a question. Looking back now after scores of songs, I can clearly see the leadership, the direction of my Heavenly Father breaking up the fallow ground in me, the planting, the watering, and all the circumstances that my brother was talking about as Father has dragged me through these circumstances for his music to be born through me. The Apostle Paul says this about Christ in Hebrews 5, 8, Though he were a son, yet learned he, learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. So there's no way, in my opinion, based on that, that a son of the Most High can be in the right place at the wrong time. Now, that makes sense, doesn't it? But how about this? There's also no way in my experience for a son of the Most High to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, why would I say that? How could I possibly think that there's ever any justification for being at the wrong place? Well, the reason is found in Psalms chapter 37, verses 23 and 24. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That is a study that everybody should look into, what the Hebrew words are for good. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, the Most High, the Heavenly Father, and he, that good man, he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord, for the Most High, for the Father, for the Creator, upholdeth him with his hand. Hallelujah. So it was around 1999, maybe the year 2000, that I found myself on a cruise ship. My neighbor and friend had taken me there because I was experiencing what we'll call a, a breakdown. I was questioning everything. I couldn't even come out of the house Questioning everything I represented at that time, everything I believed, everything I'd been taught, because the religious fairy tales that were being promoted commercially in sermon and song, even by me, were just not making the changes in me or my family as advertised. I was numbing the pain as best I could with the Christian cure, pharmaceutical drugs as well as alcohol, the worldly cure. And of course, they were just delaying the inevitable, an encounter with the truth. So my friends, Ricky and Pat, who took me on this cruise, believed it would be therapeutic for me, and of course it was, but not at all in the way any of us thought it would be. They decided that we would sing karaoke several nights on the ship. That was kind of a new thing in those days. Well, they were singing old songs like, It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. They were singing songs uh, uh, from the Elvis Presley era and other songs from that time frame. Well, they wanted me to sing, but I hardly knew any song that wasn't gospel. But I finally picked the one radio song that I had remembered from the early 70s. It was... Olivia Newton-John singing, I honestly love you. Can't tell you what that reminded me of, but it, like most songs, had a place in my heart that invoked wonderful memories. Well, you know, I'm at home on a stage, and although I wasn't necessarily, folks, in my 
right mind? Me and the guy who was host of the karaoke time played off each other spontaneously on the I love you part. I love you. And he'd say, I honestly love you. It was spontaneous for sure and rather humorous. Actually, there's a video of it that I hope doesn't surface until after I'm dead. But anyway, once the evening ended, some fellas who had done a few songs and were actually a band that was vacationing together from New Hampshire, they came over to me and they commented on my rendition of I Honestly Love You. One of the guys, Josh, said, that's the funniest stuff I've ever seen. Well, I found out later that not only could Josh sing, but he played the guitar and even wrote songs. Josh and I spent a lot of time together, the remainder of the cruise. I had no reason not to share with Josh exactly where I was emotionally, physically, spiritually. The one thing that I do remember above anything else we talked about was while I was sitting across the table from Josh outside on the top deck of the ship, I said, Josh, the only thing I know for sure these days is that there is a creator. And he has a son who redeemed me back to him, our father. Beyond that, Josh, I don't know anything. When we left the boat, uh, we had each other's contact information. So when I got home, I sent Josh a copy of every CD and every video project that we had ever done. And then somehow I lost his information. But several months later, the phone rang. I answered it. And the male voice on the other end said, is this Rob? I said, yeah. He said, I don't know if you remember me or not, but this is Josh and we met on the cruise ship. I said, of course I remember you, Josh. I'm so glad you called because somehow I had lost your number. Josh told me that because of me and the music that I had sent him, he had become a Christian given his life to Christ. Wait a minute. Because of me? The guy who knew nothing aside from there is a creator who has a son and nothing else? Yeah. He can't be at the wrong place at the wrong time. I might have been at the wrong place, but it was the right time. Now here is the rest of the story. Josh moved to San Diego, California. He joined a church out there and he booked our group for a concert at his church. When we were out there on one of our biannual West Coast trips. And then we arranged for Josh to come to our home at North Carolina to spend a few days. He did that and he brought his guitar. He and I sat on our front porch and I listened to many of the psalms that he had put to music and he was singing for me. And then he played another very interesting tune that he had written. And I thought it was amazing. But as he played it and he sang the words, I said, Josh, what are you saying? I can't understand the lyrics. He said, oh, they're just nonsensical words I made up to take up the space. There's no real meaning in the words, he said. So I said, well, uh, would it bother you if I thought to put lyrics to that tune? And he said, no, Rob, of course not. So we had made our way back into the bedroom we had for him there at the house. And so I got the family and brought him in and I asked Josh to play that tune for them. He did so. And I asked them, I said, is there any way, is this a style that you guys think would work for us? Because if so, I'm going to write some words for it. Of course, they embraced the notion joyfully. And so Josh went home and I began to work on the words that became the title song for our next album because I was in the wrong place at the right time because you can't be in a wrong place when you're a son of the Most High. It is interesting that all together in the plan of the Father, those things that Josh and I had discussed on the boat my confusion, the end of me taking any preacher or Bible student's word for what the scripture taught, my disgust with the fables and the fairy tales that I had been fed all my life. Well, that is what ended up being the theme for the song that we wrote together and that you are about to hear. I'm done. I'm done with fables and fairy tales. 
no more. Once upon a time. Thank you.